Well, well, this is this is a great day. It's a beautiful sunny day here. We can see the we can see the river, and uh, well, we're talking to Murray and Marsha Jarosh today, who have been involved in Lake Luzerne for. 84 years. 80, many, almost, <laughs> let's, many, met 84, did you, you say? 84 yeah. years. So that's remarkable. That has to be one of the longest uh, standing <laughs> 10 years, I guess you'd have to call it. And uh, uh, so thank you for participating. And what the funny thing is, we, if we, if I had a snowball, I could throw it and almost hit your place. Yeah. It's right down the street, so... We're, we're neighbors, mm -hmm. and, and uh, so uh, we're, this is part of our uh, ongoing community oral history series. We've done seven of these, and we were so pleased that we could contact you via Howard, Howard Schaefer. That's how we got your uh, your address. So really, thank you for participating, <laughs> and. Uh, so the format is we have questions and you, you know, you, uh, you respond to them and we will get a picture of your experience here over the years and your feelings about the environment up here. So if you don't mind, uh, Marcia, I would, uh, I would start with you and I would mm -hmm. like to ask you uh, where you grew up and, uh, and could you give us some background about your parents? Okay. My parents were born in this country, but their parents were, my mother's from Romania, my father's from Russia. I was born in Schenectady, and my grandparents, my paternal grandparents, bought the Luzerne property in 1929. Why they bought here, I have no clue. I assume that there were people across the diamond from Schenectady, and my only guess is that they heard about it from them. Okay. In those days, it took two hours from Schenectady, and hmm, it was a, the road was, a, was an old road, oh, okay. and they hadn't improved the road. Hmm. My uh, grandparents had a grocery store on State Street, State so Street. they worked hard in the grocery store, then drove two hours up here and worked more up here, but they okay. loved it up here. Uh -huh. And I first came when I was an infant. In 1938, they brought. I have a picture of them holding me in front of a camp. I think. Oh, isn't that something? But as a kid, my cousins, <clears throat> my brother was 22 months younger. Um, my cousins were younger yet. There were seven cousins total, <clears throat> seven grandchildren, and uh, some of the things we did. I'll just read them off. We sure. had marshmallow roasts. We went to the beach a lot horseback riding, hiking, we went berry and mushroom picking. Um, you could identify mushrooms? Well, my grandmother could and Murray could. So. Oh, okay. But she, it was chanterelle mushrooms. But sure. I remember one, she made these big meals on Sundays and had lots of people and she announced once that she had, the mushrooms she picked were in the soup and people looked very uncomfortable. Why? But they were Why? chanterelle because they <laughs> trusted oh, okay. wild <laughs> mushrooms. Uh, right. There were chanterelle okay. mushrooms, and nobody ever, ever got sick. That was the only oh, kind. What a relief. That was the only kind we picked, <laughs> okay. and we had certain mushroom spots that we went to. Oh, so okay. were hers. Okay. Interesting. And let me see what else. Um, uh, we took bird walks. It was not so much to see the birds, but to get away from the older people. Okay. And then we ended up with a Sunday in the village. Sunday. A Sunday, uh ice cream of some kind. Oh, oh, okay. So the right. bird walks were more for my mother to get away when she was up here alone with my grandmother and for her to escape all the chores, I think. Oh, so your mother went on bird walks with you? Yes, Not yes. just the no, kids? No, not just but, the kids. Uh, she yeah. just wanted to get a, a walk away from all the, yeah. the domestic chores, I think. My father would come up Wednesdays and weekends. Sure. That was the deal. Yeah. Uh, and as I just wanted to mention some of the places what we went to. The favorite one was sure. the um, Hadley Station. Mm -hmm. and it, was, it was just a lot of fun to go there and, and, and watch whatever activity there was. Mm -hmm. um, so you walked there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Walked, yeah, we walked there. Yeah. The hilltop stand was right at the corner. Right down here. Right down right. here. Yep. And so if we missed any important groceries, we could always catch up. 
And it was a, a teen, a later it was a sort of a kid's hangout, a teenage hangout. Was it? And sometimes hmm. it got a little bit, not exactly rowdy, but close. Yeah. The, the kids would fool around. I don't know. Yeah. I, I Were you start. part of that? I wasn't, no. but uh, I stayed away pretty much. But uh, oh. You didn't want to get in trouble? or No, uh, I wasn't allowed to get in trouble. You couldn't get in trouble? <laughs> no, I, my parents were pretty strict about how late I could oh, be out and all that sure. stuff. Yeah, how late could you be out on uh, the summer night? Well, my brother could stay out longer, and I resented that. Well, sure. He was younger, but they... They never told me why. They just said, you have to be here. You can't just go wandering around. So, okay. So, uh, 9 o'clock? No, maybe? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then we went, the post office was on Main Street, right opposite where the bank is now. All right. An, an old building that used to be fun to go into. There were band <laughs> concerts mm -hmm. uh, opposite the post office right. on Wednesday nights. And we liked to go, um, let me see, to the... Cabo Mountain, hiking up Cabo Mountain sure. because it was a 15 minute Cobble climb, Cabo Hill. Cabo Hill. Hill, yeah. Yeah, well, I yeah. call it a mountain. Yeah. Uh, it was a 15 minute climb, and you got a beautiful view. From sure, the top. yes, I've done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we went to the where the paper mill was. was. A 15 Cobble minute Hill. climb, Cabo Hill. Cabo Hill, yeah. Yeah, well, I yeah. call it a mountain. Yeah. Uh, it was a 15 minute climb, and you got a beautiful view. From sure, the top. yes, I've done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we went to the where the paper mill was. We always showed people Rockwell Falls and the view from there. Mm. Uh, let's see, uh, we drove to Stony Creek. and we You saw, got around. We got around. Yeah. I didn't drive, but my parents did. Right. right. And we. Uh, went to the antique store, and then Burt's Theater was right at mm. the edge on the right-hand side going toward Hadley. It was a, a great theater because they showed first-run movies there right. before that. they got to other places. Right. I had no idea why. Or how? How did he get them? I don't know. Funny. I don't know, but I saw some movies that came out first there. Right, so, right. And yeah, that was a big deal here. Oh, yeah. Burt's, that was popular. Yes. And someplace, my cousin has one of their programs. Ah, I can okay. get it for you, I think. And okay. I think that's about it. Um, we used to so love coming up here and doing all sorts of things. My cousins were younger, uh, mm -hmm. so we couldn't exactly play with them the same way. But we had a few friends here we don't see any other time, but we would go on walks with them and visit their places and sure. see them at the beach. And yeah. and, and you mentioned the, the ball field. Yes. It used to be... One field. One field, not three. Not three, and it wasn't for kids. It was a grown-up league. I don't know who they were. Yeah, we got some pictures. Yeah, actually. it was a grown-up league, and we used to watch them usually weekends. Mm. We'd, and, and people would park all over the place, and we'd watch a, a real game. Mm, sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it seems like there was a lot of community things going on oh, like yes. baseball and yes maybe it maybe a bit more than now although it's hard to compare i, I think guess. so no we went to papa's ice cream place before it became that was a big deal yeah that was before the upriver right uh oh yeah we remember that a couple yeah. other small restaurants one was torn down on the corner of main street opposite the gas station mm -hmm. uh but we just had a, a good time here. Now, if it rained, it was another problem because yeah. <laughs> couldn't do as much then. But, right, right. And there was no TV. We didn't have any TV up here. Right. Radio. Radio. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, we, we could have had a TV, but the reception wasn't so great. Right. So. Did you miss it? Not really. All right. Good. Really. Well, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, uh, did you work at this at the market? No. And you did not. No. You did not. No. At this in Schenectady. No, no, I was being, my grandfather died when I was 10, so the market was gone when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. well, they had sold it, apparently. Had, now, had you, have you, had your grandparents had experience like that in Europe, having I a don't store? No, that's know. the problem. I have no idea. I don't even know why my grandmother <clears throat> came. She came by herself, oh. and after being in New York, a while she went to Omaha and I said why oh my Omaha? God. Omaha but her, her oh. older sister was there and I have no clue I had never asked and I should have why oh. Omaha but then uh, she came back here and, and a, a, another sister was here and a third one was in New York City mm. so most of my relatives were all within between here and New York City mm. okay and they would they would come to Luzerne when they were here and visiting so she always had big family part uh, groups on Sunday. 
Sure. And everybody could come up. What what ultimately happened with the the person in Omaha? Did they stay there? They stayed there. They, they stayed, stayed there. there. Okay. And, uh, huh. Interesting, isn't yeah, it? How people... Yeah. Why there? And some uh, family moved to uh, California. Yeah, some moved to oh, California. Okay. Yeah, that I could uh, understand. But Omaha, Omaha I yeah. Why. Uh, Probably, so, maybe work-related, right? Maybe. I assume so. I don't know. My grandfather met my grandmother in Omaha. <laughs> oh. So oh, okay. that's as far as I don't know that much more. And again, when you're young, you don't think right. to ask. Still right. glad they didn't meet Warren Buffett. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, <laughs> right. they yeah. my other grandparents, my, well, my other grandfather died before I was even born, but she, my other grandmother, had a small store, another small, gro very small grocery store in Schenectady. Oh, okay. Downtown Schenectady. So. And what was the name of the market that your folks had? I think it was just Handelman's Market. Oh, okay. I think that's, I have someplace a picture of it, but that's what it was. And uh, so and that's then, why the the your house is called Handy Lodge. Yes, I assume that is because yeah. of the name, but. Uh, that's a sign made by your grandfather. Yeah, and he built oh. a little birdhouse over it. Okay. And, uh, it's still there? Still there. Yeah. And now my cousin has it because we, uh, a few years ago, we got a, a bigger place when our kids were bigger and had sure. pets and all that. Right. So uh, now my cousin, ha and she loves it. She always came up here. Her brother lives next to us up here, too. So uh, they, the whole family likes it very much. So... Oh, uh, her brother lives. Yeah, is Elise, here too? Elise's brother lives next to us on uh, what's the name of the street? I forget. Lakeshore Road. Lakeshore Road. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Uh, their older brother and my brother have places in Lake George. Oh, okay. But we always liked it better here. I didn't want to go to Lake George. Well, it's just, yeah, it's a nicer and ambiance. It's I nice. Guess. There's yeah. no motorboats. Yeah. It's quiet. Right. 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 So. Yeah. Now. This your cousin? That's the lady with the white hair. Yes, yes. With the flowers and yes, the light, the yes, lamps. And, yes. Yeah, she's done a nice job there. She has. Yeah. She has, and she's crazy yeah. about it. So I'm so Good. glad she has it. Good. And, and the uh, family is too. Yeah, the family the is too. Her children like it also. Good. And Good. I'll just say one more thing. Uh, no, you, uh, my grandmother fine. would have these great big dinners on Sunday. She would get up <clears> at six o'clock and start frying onions, even though everybody else was asleep. Oh I would God. sneak out of the house so I didn't have to do any work like that. <laughs> uh, and, and she had, a, it was always two kinds of meat. Somebody else made a cake and she made a cake. You had to have some of everything. Sure. And it was a heavy meal. And then afterwards, there was no dishwasher. Paper plates were not allowed. Okay. For I don't know why, but they weren't. So right. all the men got left after dinner and the women got stuck doing and drying the, washing and drying the dishes. Ah, it's that way around the world? Yes. Probably but the still. funny thing, there was yeah. a rebellion. My brother and his wife rebelled and one Sunday they brought peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, ate on a picnic table outside and went to the beach. Okay. That called a, a big scandal in the family. Yeah, there, yeah. My yeah. grandmother was very upset. Right. Because well, was she that... liked to be in control. Sure. And, and was went, that the end of the part? The no, Sunday no, she dinner? still oh, did it. She okay. still did it. But uh, they just, they wanted to go to the beach. And when you have a great big meal at one o'clock, right. you're not going to feel much like swimming. It's no, you're going to go to the bottom of the, <laughs> in no. the water. So that's all I have yeah. to say. But we always, No, that's fine. Uh, and whenever we can, we bring friends up here and to get away. Grandma sure. was very hospitable. But when she served her food, she... Um, just gave you what she thought you should have. She asked you, John, what do you want? Plop. Right. And what do you want? Plop. Okay. It's yeah. this before you could even open right. your mouth. Right, right, right. But nobody said anything. No, because yeah. yeah, she, yeah. she was the matriarch and she oh. had to rule the roost. Yeah. So. That's something. Well, um, well um, so we're not sure how they... Uh, Discovered Lake Luzerne, but we're glad they no, did. I'm right? glad so, they did. I have yeah. no idea. Just it was cl fairly close to Schenectady. Yeah, but it took a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. to, to do it all. So yeah. I don't know. Well, okay, okay, that's 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 interesting. Um, so let me ask. Uh, you went to college, mm -hmm. right? And where did you go? I went to Vassar. Vassar, and and that's in Hudson Valley. Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie, right? And you studied what? History. And 
why history and not physics uh, or something. Well, yeah. uh, we wouldn't have done so well in physics and history. I, I liked always liked history, but uh, there wasn't much to do with it except teach, and that that's another story. I wish I'd done something else besides teaching. Oh, because the discipline was beyond me. I expected when I went to school, we looked up to our teachers. Yeah. We never, I never answered back, and that is so different when I started teaching. Really? Uh huh. And it, uh, when was that? When did you start? Well, I was about 62 or something. It was in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. And it, it wasn't a very good area in Brooklyn, and I heard in s words that I never heard oh. before, and my father was pretty good at. <laughs> Swearing a little, you know, not, right. but not like this. <laughs> right. I mean, I just, I just didn't like it. So that's another story. But uh, well, how long did you teach? I, I, I taught a couple of years there, and then I, when we moved to, when I moved up from New York, mm -hmm. to Schenectady, I taught a few years, mm -hmm. and then did some tutoring work. Okay. After. Okay. So. Uh, and uh, you were living. By yourself in Brooklyn? Do you yes. have an apartment? I, had par I shared yeah. an apartment with a friend from Schenectady. Oh, nice. And I was yeah. lucky the commute was easy because I was going against traffic. They were coming in and I was going that way. So mm -hmm. it wasn't a crowded train. So it was, that part was easy. So what do you wish you had studied? Almost anything. <laughs> I mean, no, because, I, liked, I loved yeah, history, but right. I, there are so many more opportunities, especially for women today. Sure. Uh, I would have yeah. liked to do something like stage design. On Schenectady, oh. there was nothing like that. Even oh, okay. There was a museum, and I tried to do volunteer work at the museum, and they had me cleaning stuffed animals, which wasn't exactly fun or interesting. Right. So, right. Yeah. In the, just in a big city, there's more. There was more to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting. Our teachers in college. It was a woman's college then. Yeah. Were always telling us. To you know, get higher degrees more and more and more, and then at home the the society just wanted you to get married. So it was a, a little a, 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 it was tension. just before just before everything started to change in the sixties. So. Right, right. Now stage design. Uh, well, making scenery sets, I'd, artwork for that kind. Of, I liked artwork. I would have liked oh, okay. to do more with that. Mm. Well, it's not too late. Not well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Let's be honest. But <laughs> well, I mean, did you draw? Did you yes, like yes. to make? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. I did a lot. I still paint. Oh, great. Hey, do you show your work or? No, okay. Okay. Oh, only in the family. Only in the family. Yeah, right, I understand. Well, that's very interesting okay. that, uh, that brave enough to uh, venture off to Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. But then you. Wanted to come home and some. Well, or did I just you? didn't. I I didn't like. Oh, I did work in the sixth grade. It was called Higher Horizon School, and that was better because the kids were smaller, mm. uh, and these kids really needed help. They were from bad family situations. Mm. The problem is that that school helped them in the sixth grade, but once they went to the bigger school they were lost again they uh -huh. the junior high they fed into the junior high and there was an extra help or tutoring right. for them so oh I, I i can relate to that yeah i went from a small little grammar school to an enormous high school mm -hmm. and yeah definitely because some, some of the kids different. had talent but yeah the family situations were so bad at home they just right right there. and that was in brooklyn yeah higher horizons mm -hmm. Well, uh, th thank you. That was great. Um, so, Murray, um, where were you born? Well, I was born in in Poland, far eastern Poland, mm -hmm. not too far from Ukraine, mm -hmm. and not too far from Lithuania, mm -hmm. in a very, very small town. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of a town... <coughs> that uh, we see today only in some Western movie. You don't, oh, uh, right. I don't think America has any more uh, little communities like that. Right. First of all, there were only about three or so roads. Mm. Crisscross and maybe one side road, sure. and that's it. Right. And there were, one of them was cobblestone, and the other, the rest, 
was just dirt road. We had no electricity, no running water. Oh my God. No power, no telephone, no Hmm. telegraph, no railway station, no bus station, just a little hall, a municipal hall Hmm. and a post office. And that was it. And that was it. It was a farming community. Farming community. And what was the na- What was it called? It was called Hachanchitz, <laughs> but it's so small that it wasn't even on the map. No, not and on the map. The the nearest town that was on the map was Ilia, and it is today on the map. That's where my father came from. Mm. Was born in Ilia, mm. and my mother came from even a smaller community called Baturna. Huh. And, and, uh, but in somehow in our family, in both my father's side and my mother's side, education was a primary objective, a primary focus for the children. Mm-hmm. So my father received an education in... Um, in religious studies, hmm. and he had a, uh, completed courses for a rabbi. Uh-huh. And my mother received an education in secular studies, mm-hmm. and she completed the equivalent of a two-year community college, mm-hmm. and also spent one year at a university. Hmm. So she, for that part of the world, for that part of the time, she was very highly educated. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah. And uh, both my mother and my father had their own businesses. My mother, with her sister, established a small store, mm-hmm. a country which today Maybe I would refer to General. it today as the uh, Dollar General. Sure. A small mm-hmm. sort of department store. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was yeah. about a little smaller than the uh, uh, the Dollar General. It's, in, it's mm-hmm. here in uh, in Hadley across the river. Right. But it was that type. It had it, yeah. almost everything. Mm. <clears throat> but it it had probably about a quarter of the store. Where it was primarily materials, cloth for for suiting and shirts, and silks for brides and that sort of thing, <laughs> and and hardware. My father was a leather designer, oh. and and they also used to make boots and shoes and 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 uh, a little uh, type of uh, case briefcases. So they each were very busy. Yeah. Now your your dad didn't pursue becoming a rabbi then. No. No. No, he did not. Uh, he was very skilled, very talented in mm. many in in many different disciplines. Mm. But he chose that mm. the the leather designing. In fact, his teacher, where my father studied, called him to be to, to be. More skilled than the teacher. Ah, okay. He yeah, was very, very, very good at it. So yeah. he, they had their own business, mm-hmm. but my mother, bless her soul, whether she learned it mm-hmm. in, uh, in in Minsk or in Vilnius, mm-hmm. wherever she was studying, mm-hmm. when, she, when they founded the store, established the store, she... She uh, established two practices. One is allowing the people to buy on time Mm -hmm. without interest. Mm -hmm. And the other, she instructed the staff to always give something extra, Mm -hmm. a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. If you're selling a meter or two of cloth, Give them a few centimeters extra. Sure. If it's going to be half a kilo of sugar, a couple grams Mm -hmm. or a gram Mm -hmm. extra. Mm -hmm. And that way, the reputation spread. Sure. 
Mm-hmm. Now, ha- have you returned to that area to look and see what's there now? or I did not. You did not? I planned at one time, but it didn't work out. And then when I was in Europe, I couldn't go because of military restrictions mm-hmm. when I was serving in the military. Mm-hmm. But my mother did go back. She did. Unfortunately, my father died in 1952. Mm-hmm. And my mother lived a good ripe old age till 1996, I think, or 94, yeah. 95, mm-hmm. six. Mm-hmm. So uh, she went back. We, we made sure that she went back a couple of times. Okay. She also wanted to see her sister, the only surviving member of the family, mm-hmm. who lived in Siberia. They met in Moscow and in Minsk. So she went back to the place. Now, I have to ask, uh, <coughs> Siberia sounds like uh, maybe a penal situation? No, no, no. Her husband, the one that she married, was an engineer, oh, okay. a very skilled engineer, and he, during the war, went back with the forces, for, he worked for the military, mm-hmm. to locations which uh, were producing machinery and military hardware. Mm-hmm. And actually, the, the community where they lived was uh, Omsk. O-M-S-K, mm-hmm. Omsk, it's well-known mm-hmm. Siberian yeah. mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. Because I know that a lot of people were sent there right. in an unfortunate <laughs> circumstance. But, so did, but, and you never got an no. opportunity to go, or you didn't want to? Or? No, we, we, I, we couldn't go, he, he couldn't go, and we just never, we should have, but we never quite do it. Mm, okay, yeah, you couldn't because... Uh, what was the restriction there? Military. Because you well, I was for, worked for military, mm. and in, in, had s- certain special assignments, mm. and I had a secret classification. Oh, yeah. And because of that, when I was in Europe, I was not allowed to go into Soviet territory. Got it. Okay. Okay. Even when I had to travel to Berlin. Mm. I couldn't travel by rail. I had to travel by air oh. because by rail, we had to cross the border mm. with the so which the Soviets occupied. Sure, and they wouldn't allow me to do that because they worried about you being captured or something. Yeah. And I didn't yeah. have secrets that anybody would want. Right, but the, the, it was a time when there was a lot of mistrust. Yeah. And, and security concerns. Sure. And what were you doing f- for the army when you were there? What was your job? My original job was to be a special, uh, an aide de camp to the head of the military police. Mm-hmm. That was my cover. Mm-hmm. And my, and my uh, other assignments came from G2, which is military, uh, which is army military intelligence. Oh, so you did things that were... No, I, well, there weren't major things, but there were yeah. some things which were undercover. Right. Oh, my God. Wow. That's, I've never met anyone with that kind of experience. <laughs> Explain. Can you... No, no, none that stuff that you see on television. No, I understand. Because I had but... to go into the community, whether it's in Germany or whether it's in Italy or in France, and and gather intelligence mm-hmm. on attitudes of the people. I got it. Wow, that's interesting. And what yeah. was what were the concern? What was the buzzword? Uh, right. wh- what was the attitude to a certain subjects? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. bring back, come back to Germany where my headquarters was. Right. And, and uh, give a report to the chief of staff. Oh, okay. Well, I wish you would. I wish you had gotten to go. Yeah. <laughs> but but, well, it's not too late, right? Well, that was before yeah. I was before I was married. Marshall was not on my radar. At no, that I know, time. right, right. Okay. But today, you'd yeah. be afraid to go, especially the way things. Are oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. I don't. Know, I would go, but it's a question that, that we're advanced age. 
Right. And, and who knows? Right, right. You don't want to be stuck there. So. Yeah. So, so that's where you were born. And uh, your your early years, you stayed in that little town. In a little town, yes. I, I, I actually, I should have said that I was born into a middle-class family. My parents did well, and I was raised by nannies. And they were occupied, occupied with their respective businesses. Mm -hmm. And I was raised by nannies and uh, didn't have any issues, yeah. anything like that, until the war years. Right, right, right. So it was a, definitely a, a small small town and rural in character. Very rural. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> well, now this question is one one that I'm sure has been posed to you quite often. I but can you talk about your experience of the war and the fate of your family? Can you talk about that? Yes, I, I do, and I, I, I also frequently speak, used to speak to schools prior to COVID. Mm. Uh, the war didn't come to us until 1941, late spring 1941. And as soon as the Nazis came in, uh, everything changed. My parents, who were as my mother put it, the richest people in town, although rich had a different meaning in that part of the world than it has here. Mm -hmm. They just were very well off. Right. And, and uh, so the Gestapo came, they uh, came to our house, they stripped my parents, you know, naked, and they beat them, asking to tell them where their gold is and money is buried. And, and uh, they tortured my father. And my grandmother was fatally injured by them right there in our house in front of our eyes. And that caused her death a few days later. Within a week, my grandmother died. And they didn't touch me. The after they got through with my parents, they herded us into our only school. We had only one school and one church, Russian Orthodox Church. They herded us into the school and they constructed a ghetto in the, in the oldest part of the town where the houses were very close together because most rural towns that spread, they're not, mm. but there was a section of the, of the town that was, houses were closer. Mm. Uh, so they, they put us into the ghetto, surrounded us with barbed wire fences and stationed guards. Mm. And they didn't do anything for us. Uh, they, the men were taken away, you know, at dark, at dawn, even before dawn, to do some labor someplace else. Women were taken to the military garrison to do the whatever work they needed to be done. And we kids were stayed in, in the ghetto, and those who were sick or, no, or not able to move stayed in the ghetto. So my parents and a few other people called on, on the uh, priest. He sent his uh, assistant to us in the ghetto, and they said, to this assistant to talk to the priest, to talk to the farmers, to supply us with some basic foods. Because mm. you weren't getting any food, we're you getting, mean? Yeah, not, from, yeah. not from the Nazis. And they promised that they would pay after the war ended. And the farmers responded and gave us a lot of them, basic food, potatoes, carrots, beets, and some grains, that sort of thing. And that what really sustained us. Mm. And uh, we stayed in the ghetto for about a year, from 1942 to 1941 to 1942. In 1942, uh, we made a break 
uh, with the help of uh, the uh, resistance fighters. Oh they God. were called partisans. Yep, the partisans. Yes. Yep. Oh my God. And so we escaped, but only only about 60% of us escaped. It was a rainy, it was a rainy, awful night in uh, in April. It was still cold and rainy and thunder, but it it helped mm. and us to escape. Sixty mm. percent escaped. Those who had who had uh, relatives who could not could not walk, could not be mobile, stayed with them, mm -hmm. unfortunately, and mm -hmm. we escaped. And when the uh, Nazis discovered, the Gestapo discovered the ghetto. There was a break in the ghetto. They, of course, went hunting for people, and they caught a lot of people and killed them right away. And those who remained in the ghetto were, were summarily executed. That was the end of it. Yeah. But we were lucky. We escaped to the woods. There was also with, with us lived a cousin a niece of my mother's, and we escaped to the ghetto. We stayed in the woods for several days. It was rain, cold, miserable, mm. no mm -hmm. food. But my mother, we, they knew where they were. She took a chance, went to a farmer, and asked if he would let us into his barn, give us a chance to rest up, dry, and give us some food. And he gladly did so. He says, Belka, her nickname was Belka. Her name was Bella but the nickname was Belka. Belka, you were good to us. And says, and now it's our turn to help you. Mm -hmm. That was your mom's name, Belka. Yeah. Belka. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so he did, and we got some food. They took our clothes, washed, dried, etc. We stayed in the, and during the night, night and day, we could hear shooting. We knew people were being caught and, mm -hmm. and killed. So we stayed there a little while, and then we moved on to another farmer, the same thing, and on and on and on, mm. uh, until we encountered, we encountered a group of partisans. Mm. And my parents joined the partisans, and we went with the partisans. Ah, uh, did you mean joined as in fought? Yes, well, yeah. my parents, they, were, they always traveled at night. It became a problem. I was still young. I was eight years old, mm. and my father had to carry me a bit, help me. It became a problem, so they knew. They knew a farmer friend went to him and asked him if he would take me in, so my parents could be free mm -hmm. from uh, you know having to drag me all the time. Mm -hmm. And he did uh, dress me as a girl, and he said it's his niece from Minsk, and, that was it. And, they it, went, and they went off with the partisans. And it worked? It worked. It you worked. were a girl from Minsk. For Minsk. 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 His niece from Minsk, I stayed there for about 11 months, and I came from, from 1943 to, uh, to 19, no, 1942 to 1943. Mm -hmm. And then by that time, the Soviets and the American forces, uh, the, the, the Western forces, were gaining upper hand on the Nazis, mm -hmm. and they pushed them back and became dangerous. My parents knew that. They came and picked me up and left the partisan, that partisan group, and we went deep into the woods, deep into the woods. Mm. Well, we stayed there for approximately a year. The, the three of you? Yes, plus we met other people. Other people, okay. They came sort of another community developed. Got it. And, and we stayed in the deep, deep woods mm -hmm. and until 1944. By that time, the Soviets were pushing from the east mm -hmm. and the, the Allied forces from the west. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, for us, the war was over in late June. 1944. Okay. About a year, a, about a year before it before, right. ended. Right. And so we came out of the woods. Came out of the woods. Well, that's remarkable. Um, we went back to our, 
our town, nothing was left of our town. So I went to my father's town. Yeah. Ilya. Ilya. Yeah. Right. And we stayed in Ilya for about a year. And then began our, we got permission from the local commissar to travel west. We said we wanted to go to Palestine. Mm -hmm. You did. They, that's what that's what we told them. And he told us, he says, go wherever you want. He says, we are going to catch up with you. You won't be able to hide from us. Who, who said that? The, the communist, the commissar. Oh, you want, okay. Huh. And well, by the time we got to Warsaw and then to the second largest city, Lodz, mm -hmm. the whole city was swarming with Russian soldiers. Oh. He wasn't kidding. Right, right. So, but your intent was to go to Palestine. Right. Okay. Okay. Perfect. You got it. Yeah, and from there, from law, from Lodz, we were in Lodz a few months. Mm -hmm. We went to Berlin. Uh, we got to Berlin. From Berlin, we got to the American sector, and the Americans put us in a DP camp. It's a displaced persons camp. Right. I was going to ask you about that. Where was it? It was. In Bavaria, Bavaria, between Munich and Ulm. Sure, okay. It was in Leipheim, right along the the Main River. Mm -hmm. It was a military base, mm -hmm. and we were housed in, in the military base. Mm -hmm. I did. I saw that some of these camps were at the site of the uh, of like Bergen Belsen. No, 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 they no. had a camp there. No, yeah, this they is, did, but those is. were extermination camps. Right. This was a a, a military barracks for the for the uh, their own military, mm. and and not not in the uh, not a prisoner. Yeah, not right. a prisoner. Yeah. Okay. We were nowhere near the the uh, the, the the extermination camps, mm -hmm. the concentration camps. Okay. The nearest place was Dachau, which mm -hmm. is just outside of Munich. Mm -hmm. But that place we saw already while we were in the DP camp. Okay, got it, got that. And uh, how many years there in that in the camp? Three years. Three I years. was three years. Yes. All right. And then, did you talk? Did you mention that you had been sponsored? So Palestine didn't happen. No. no. But America did happen. Yes. Right. We had my we had a cousin. My mother had a first cousin, in Schenectady, and he's the one who sponsored us to come to America. Mm -hmm. But we had to wait for a visa, mm -hmm. and here we are, three years in in a DP camp, and still no visa. My parents were concerned that I was growing up and didn't get any education. I got a, a, a religious religious studies education, mm -hmm. but no secular education. Mm -hmm. And for them, secular education was possible. So they allowed me to assume another identity from another person in a different camp mm -hmm. and allowed me to leave that DP camp to go somewhere else and register to emigrate from Germany to Canada. Mm -hmm. And in six weeks I was gone. Okay. To, and I came to Toronto. Toronto, okay. I lived there two and a half years. Mm -hmm. In Toronto I was supported for a year and a half by the Jewish Welfare Council and went to school. And then I decided that there was enough to be Sponsored so those on leaving Toronto, you came to the U.S. and uh, where did you? Your folks were already here, so you you came to Schenectady. From no, I, I yeah, yeah, my parents had arrived and they they settled in Albany, New York, in Albany, and uh, so I, I came to Albany actually, and I. For finished uh, high school, and you know, I was only there about six weeks, 
and then went on to college and from college to law school. But <clears throat> after I came, my parents bought a small corner grocery store. In Schenectady? In Albany. Oh, in Albany? In Albany. Oh, okay. Yes. It's on uh, 2nd Avenue corner, Clinton Street. Oh, okay. And, Got it. And uh, that, uh, it, it was uh, a, a way for us to become self-supporting. Mm -hmm. We were open from 7 in the morning till midnight, seven days a week. And how many hours a week did you mention? I worked 120 hours a week. During the summer, during school vacation, mm. and during the academic year, while I went to school and law school and college, I worked only 60 hours a week. Oh, that, you took a break, 60 hours <laughs> yes. a week, yeah. And, and but that enabled us to, you know, to save up <coughs> because we didn't go anywhere, Right. couldn't go anywhere. And, and the margin of profit was very, very small. Sure. So everything that we made was saved. Mm -hmm. And that enabled us to have, to save enough money mm -hmm. to pay for college mm -hmm. for the, and as well as for law school mm -hmm. and have some left over when my, when my mom retired. Very nice, very nice. Um, so how did, how did you meet? Because uh, you didn't know Marcia at that time. No. So how did that happen? Well, a cousin of mine was the one who, who heard about Marsha, and she gave me her telephone number, and I called Marsha a uh, cold call. Right. And she accepted a date, and we, uh, we went to a movie. Right. Saw La Dolce Vita. Oh, yeah. Sitting in the front there, looking at a screen blaring at us, <laughs> right. which wasn't that pleasant, but nevertheless, we survived it. You did. Right. And were you expecting this call, or was no, re you no, were not? No. Okay. Uh, but you, but you were brave. Yes. And, and <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> My mother. Then after I think about uh, second or third date. I brought her to the store. Sure. And there was nowhere in the store, nowhere place to sit down. She was standing there. Some customers come again. But my mother met her, and she was taken with Marsha. Ah, and she well. kept after me that I have to continue to right. romance her. Right. Which I did. Yes, very nice. And was successful. And, yes, and, and she introduced you to Lake Luzerne. Yes. 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 Yeah. The first time it came to Lake Luzerne, to be, yet still in the, in the, uh, how shall I say, initial stages, mm -hmm. was 1961. 1961, okay. Summer of 1961. Right. And then I continued, now 1962, yeah. and at the end of 62, I persuaded her to say yes. Ah. And, and then we were married in 1963, mm -hmm. in August, mm -hmm. and ever since we've been coming to Luzerne almost every weekend. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Isn't that something? And for me, coming to Luzerne was just, how shall I say, the balm, the yeah. like a Shangri-La, it was right. a very pleasant time, mm -hmm. relaxing, yes. and also, what was nice, is Marsha's family who who, who was, so that was here, and the members, I had no other family. Mm. Uh, mm. My mother and my cousin was connected, and, and had a cousin in Israel, but that was it. Mm. No other family. Mm. So the family was sort of a, a, a comfort. Right. A great deal of comfort. Right. And a very pleasant, and, and that was it for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Came to, to Luzerne was the time to re, uh, recuperate, regenerate. Sure. Well, I'm thinking about the extremes of uh, your experience. I mean, because living in the forest for almost a year? A year. A year. year. Yeah. And the, the emotional toll that took and physical toll. 
and then coming back and then having this soulless and bomb at Lake Luzerne. That's the two poles of human experience there. Yes, you're, you're quite right. Yes. Well, I'm glad that you. Uh, I'm glad that this town provided that for you, for the two of you. Thank you. And I, I'm very, very pleased that you still come here. And we're happy that also our children yes. receive the very, the same kind of feeling for Luzerne mm -hmm. and their grandchildren. In fact, our grandson, when he had opportunity, called and said, could I bring my friends come over for a weekend, just my, I and my friends? Mm. And well, of course we said yes. Isn't that beautiful? Well, I want to thank you for participating in this. Thank you. I'd like to talk to you for another couple of years, but that's not possible. So we'll be, uh, we'll be taking care of this and it will be, uh, people will be seeing it. I, we're going to guarantee that. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep.